Okay, oh, I am. Yes. I am concerned. Okay. Okay. Headlights. Am I the only oh. one that's still gonna... has John Madden on the screen? Because it still says John Madden. Oh, oh, there is a creepy yes. ass smiley face. Let me like screenshot this. Like I see this. I see the creepy smiley face, but I also see. Sometimes it does that. Sometimes it'll. And, you, and you'll have to like reload. Like, whispering in in everyone's ears. Just trying I don't like this. She whispers into like your it. ear softly. John Madden. John Madden. John Madden. John Madden. I feel really bad because I was the John Madden. Nice. There you I go. was the erect penis. It's okay. <laughs> oh my god. Was most of the text that was being put into that. Sorry. All, all, all of the text that wasn't the original John Madden. Yeah, all the really offensive things. Those were me. <laughs> Excellent. Oh my god. Alright, you ready for this taco? No, but let's go ahead and get started anyway. Fuck, I'm ready. <coughs> Alright, that music was only meant for an intro, so go away music, you're creeping me out now. Oh, I didn't even hear it. It's just an infinite loop. Oh, well, if you didn't hear it, I'll just, just turn happy. it up. I'm just gonna leave this John Madden on my screen. It'll, it'll be a nice one. It's not that bad, but... <laughs> just, just it probably would get scary after a while. All right, so let me go over. Let me go over this again. Prepare some Isaac Sensei. <coughs> He will never notice you. No! No! <laughs> okay, so so let's go down the list. Is that Shonen Redhead? John Madden. Is he a natural redhead? The redneck. Probably. And the there's a the redhead and the redneck. And the enormous hobo. <laughs> and the little Japanese girl. And Hipster Native American girl. Uh, what am I missing? Wait, African wait. African American writer. Do we have, um, like a compilation of all their photos and stuff? Yes. Or all their drawings and stuff? Uh, Max was working on something. We all need to do, like, oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Max, you should let me see it. I never got to see the rest of Yeah. Yeah, really. Impress me. And then we have we have yeah. Bridget, who is our medical lady. He's a nerd. Okay. All right. All right. I don't like this smiley face. It's creeping me out, man. Isaac, uh... Your days have continued to go as best as they could, considering all that's happened. Which isn't to say very much. You hide yourself behind a, uh, an aloof demeanor in an attempt to hide how... hide your obsession, hide your hurt. What does your, what does, uh, he teaches uh, English literature, okay. Mm-hmm. And it's all happened about six months ago. Oh my God. Another day, you're sitting around grading papers. Nothing out of the ordinary. And, once again, 
just as just as normal as everything else is. You finish grading the papers fairly early and kind of just figure, whatever, who cares? Not a big deal. Eh, this looks kind of like an A, this looks kind of like a B, whatever, man. <laughs> Pretty much. But your mind has been con all day, you've, and as you spend many other days, all day you just feel like you need to go back into the library again and continue your research. <clears throat> You pretty much have started living there at this point. In an attempt to figure out what happened. And every single time you think about it, you go, you're dragged back into the horrible scene. As you walked into your home, it was the night of your anniversary. Oh. You came back holding a bouquet of flowers for your wife, for your beautiful wife. And when you walked in, when you walked in, you saw her on the bed, um, in a room coated in red. And that was the day everything changed. You know, the, e the easiest answer was obvious, you know, it was just, the f at first, Psychopath. A fucking psychopath did this. A sick, horrible person must have done this. And the police will find him, and when they do, he's going to pay. But they never came back with evidence. They never could find anything. In fact, the only one that had any motive or any evidence against them was you. So for six months you were... Six months you were busy trying to convince them that it wasn't you. It couldn't have been you and... You know, being accused of murdering someone you love... That's not easy for anybody. But you somehow made it through, and you tried to piece your life back together for six months. And so that night, you once again find yourself in the library. Trying to figure out more about what happened. Because when you walked in there, there were things that... Things just didn't add up. Why would they... Why would they kill her like that? Why would anyone want to kill her? What did she do to some, anybody that deserved this? When you arrived there... It didn't add up. And over the course of the next few months, you really sat down and tried to think about what happened. Because the first thing you heard when you walked into your house was the sound of wind coming from inside your house. The sound of rustling leaves. And when you walked upstairs, you saw there were strange things uh, in the room. And at the time, it, you were just so shocked that this happened to your wife that you didn't really think too much about it, about any of the small things that were around. And the police clearly didn't make any effort to try and figure it out, like why there were sticks and stones uh, in your wife's body. What? Her body was cut open. And inside, someone had put sticks and stones. It's fucking live. <sighs> Shit, son. And there were leaves. Leaves covering the room. And at first, someone thought, the police thought, well, window was open. The guy probably was just doing this to desecrate the body. And 
and it just makes no sense. And so you began your you began to spend a lot of time in the library trying to make sense of what these sticks and stones might signify. Maybe that could be a clue to help the police find this murderer and put them down. Yet when you started looking into it, you began to find more information that just made more s that just made more questions and answers. You began to learn of these things called fairies. And that Sometimes, when a fairy wants to take someone away, they don't like having people come after them. And so what they do is they make a clone, a doppelganger, made of sticks and stones, filled with leaves and dreams of times that would never have happened. And they say that these doppelgangers can live just like a normal human. They can feel sorrow, they can feel happiness, they can feel love, they can have children, just like everybody else, no one would know. Was the killer trying to just throw you off? Was he just... What, what could possibly have happened here? The more questions you ask, the deeper you go into it, until lately you just have you just stop going back home. You've just spent all your time in the library reading more and more of uh, legends and fairy tales and trying to piece together what you can. You have a section of the library cordoned off just for you, where you busily scribble every night. With a cup of coffee, some cheap Chinese food that you uh, that you get, and just keep working, trying to figure out what happened right. to your wife. And one day you just pass out. You've pushed your body a bit too far, and you wake up to a strain uh, to a woman who was. Uh, she is seeing if you're all right. Um, giving you a bit of water, and she looks down at you. She has a very kind smile. She says, "Well, Mr. Isaac, seems that you uh, have been spending quite a bit of time here in the library. Are you all right?" Uh. Yeah, fine. You recognize her as uh, as another professor here at the school. She was recent. She's been here. She hasn't been here for very long. Uh, you don't really. You didn't really catch her name, but uh, she seems to know who you are. Uh, she's in charge of the medical uh, the medical field. She's got her degree, doctor, and everything. So, smart person. Uh, surgeon on campus. Um, she seems to be visiting the library pretty late, too. Wearing, and she's here, for starters. But she's also wearing her... Uh, she's wearing her medical gown and everything like that. Her medical uh, jacket. And she's checking... Checking to see if you're alright. Um, she asks... So, it seems like you passed out, dehydration, those kind of things happen, you drank a little bit too much caffeine, didn't drink enough water. And uh, while she was waiting for you to wake up, it seems like she's been sitting at, in your chair, uh, going through some of your books. So, I see you've taken a recent um, interest in fairies.
She leans back with this uh, kind of a coy smile, kind of just like, so what's what's with the fairies? You think? One sec. Probably close all the books and say it's for a he's studying up uh, for a, a book he's been reading a literature book and it involves fairies and he was trying to get more background information on them to better understand the book oh so. that, that's that's interesting so uh, did you find anything in particular I'd like to know more Uh, nothing really. Just usual folktale fairy things. <laughs> so kawaii. Well, I know a couple of books I can recommend to you, if you'd like. Uh, don't tell anyone, but I I do enjoy a good fairy tale every now and then. They've always been fascinating to me, so I might know a couple of things. Oh, that would be very helpful. Thank you. She writes down a couple of book names, and she's still talking to you, and you can tell very quickly she is, uh... She's very capable in multitasking. Uh, she writes and talks to you at the same time. So, I recently heard from some of the faculty that you lost your wife very recently, and I want to say I'm sorry that that happened. Um, I'm glad that you managed to find something to help take your mind off of it. And uh, I hope that you'll be able to recover. And if there's anything, you just, if you, I don't know, maybe you want to talk about anything. Um, I'm fine. You can always. <laughs> I'd rather not talk about anything. I understand. I understand. I don't want to. I don't want to pressure you. After several awkward moments, uh, after several awkward minutes, she finishes writing down and slides it over to you and says, "Here, if you um, happen to need a, if you happen to need an oral source, please let me know, and I'll be more than happy to share what I know with you." Um, you know where to find me on campus. I'm not. I, I'm over in the. You know the uh, medical side of the campus. Um, Pick up I'll, the paper and say thank you. I'll I'll leave you alone now. <laughs> Just be sure to take some water. Ease off on the coffee, and uh, you should be back up to. You should be back normal in no time. And then she kind of excuses herself very quickly. Look at the paper, see what she suggested. You note that uh, several of the books that she mentioned are actually um, you go in, you take a look at the roster, and you know check on the computer and see whether or not these books are here. And you find that the books aren't actually in this library. Uh, so you go around looking to see where you can get a hold of some of these books, uh, some copies of these books, and find that uh, one of the books, there's only one copy in the world. I mean, the other books you find, and you know, they're, they've pretty much have the same information like you you go through take a look and say uh, and you see that oh okay great some of these I, I already know um, but the other one is owned by one person in particular a woman by the name of Jennifer Descartes
What do you choose to do? Uh, Knowing that this... Up this person, see where they are. Very, a, very learned woman, uh, this Jennifer Descart is. She's got a doctorate. She's a very capable surgeon. Um, and also teaching at the same school you are. Really now? What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> um, I well, I'm assuming it's still probably really late at night, right? It is. Okay. So then he would probably wait until morning to go and get more information on what classes he teaches and where he could maybe find her and ask to borrow the book. Go back in to the study, study area and lie down and fall asleep. You wake up the next morning pretty early before the sun actually comes out, and you go over to, you know, start making your way over to the medical, and you know that those guys like to get up super early. And you see someone on the campus grounds. She looks like the woman that you saw yesterday, except she's wearing some weird outfit, black jeans, and uh, her hair is put up, and she's got this weird hat on her face, mm -hmm. uh, on her head. Oh, God. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> She's sitting next to a tr next to the tree, except she's facing towards the tree and holding a book in her hands. Am I close enough to see what the book is? Yes, you can all. You're also close enough to tell she's reading it upside down, and judging from the way that she's trying to read it, it sounds like she's really struggling. Walk up to her and flip the book right side up. She looks at the book being flipped up right side up, and then looks back at you, and the shadows that go over her face, it's probably just play of lights because it's dark, but she looks back up at you, and she seems confused by you. And then she seems to get upset about something and picks up the book and runs off. Walk away, back to the <laughs> medical building. Okay. Once you get there, uh, you go looking for uh, you go looking for Jennifer Descartes, and you find that Doctor Descartes is uh, busy seeing a patient right now. But if you wait for a little bit, she might uh, she might uh, she might be able to make some time to talk to you. Yep, the wait's not that long. Go ahead and wait for her. Uh, you see that strange... You see that strange person that you saw out in the yard come... She's now at the front desk, and she is pestering the receptionist, uh, who says, Dr. Descartes will see you now. Please, please go into the office. And she eventually makes her way into Dr. Descartes' office. She said that to the other woman, right? Uh, the receptionist said that to uh, the strange woman with the hat. Okay. Gotcha. And uh, she goes over, and as she saunters by, she seems to notice you, but she looks at your feet and scurries into the uh, scurries into the office, holding that book that she had in her hand. Um, you realize that it's a children's book to learn how to read. Probably laugh to myself. And then... Am I seated near her office at all? Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe just listen in to see if I can hear them say anything. Make a perception check. Will I continue to patiently wait? Mm -hmm. Okay, what is that again? That's wits plus composure. Take the total number of dice you have, add them together, and roll that many d10s. You have seven? I have 
three wits and four composure. Okay, so roll seven d10. Oh, that was one. <laughs> that was one D10. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It's the most critical failure I've ever seen. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, wait. Did I do that right? Looks right. Uh, that's D20s. There we go. Now we're talking. Two tens. Four successes so far. Reroll your tens. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. Roll, roll two. Roll two because you got yeah two d tens. Yeah. Two. Okay. Ooh. Still a very good roll. Four successes. You lean back. You lean your head nonchalantly back where you can. Here through the thin walls. You've been here long enough to know the walls are super thin. And you hear one voice is very calm. Almost uh, just a very, very patient kind of a voice. And you hear uh, you hear her trying to help help this person learn how to read? The other person clearly doesn't know how to read and is asking, "What's this? What's this mean? Which one? What is that? Is is that the is that the one with the 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 the, the, the B sound?" She says, "No, no, that's that's F." Oh. <laughs> and you hear this go on for about half an hour until uh, the. What's this? Until the doctor finally uh, cracks open her door and says, um, "Mr. Isaac, if you would please, if you would please step inside." Get up and go in her office. Um, as you step into the office, it's the woman you saw yesterday, the one who helped you. She turns around and says, "Oh, well." Did you get a chance to take a look at the sources that I recommended? Wait, the... The Jennifer lady is the woman who came to visit me? That's her. You never did ask her name. Oh, ho ho. Uh, you also realize that the odd woman with the hat, she never left the room, but she's not in here. And she looks exactly like Jennifer. If Jennifer had her hair up and were wearing uh, more, uh, a less doctorly outfit. But there were two people. We heard two people. But they sounded exactly alike. Okay. Hmm. Um. Respond to her question about yeah, I got to look at the book, and she has a uh, seat in her probably... chair, uh, her desk, mm -hmm. and she sits down on her desk and offers the seat uh, in front of her desk to you. Take the seat. You'd probably laugh when he said, "I didn't realize you were the one who owned oh, the book and came oh, to see me." I am so sorry. I I I didn't realize I didn't um. Tell you my name. Well, that, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm a bit. As you can probably tell, I'm not super good with um, dealing with people. Uh, I'm more used to, you know, um, surgery type stuff. Cutting. Uh, sorry. Um, look. Let me try and start over again. My name is Jennifer Discardis. Uh, it's nice to meet you. And um, how can I help you today? <laughs> Well, I was wondering if I could borrow one of the books you recommended me. Oh! Seeing as how you're the only owner of it. <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's actually sitting right here on my desk. And uh, she motions to a really large book. Um, 
the book itself seems very interesting in the sense of it doesn't look like it's made out of any material that you've ever seen before. The cover looks almost like it was carved out of wood. The pages, they are, uh, the pages themselves, they have this very thick cut, like it, the whole thing was made out of slicing a tree into pieces. And it's filled with pictures, diagrams, um, all of which have been so artfully, carefully carved in and painted. It's a beautiful work of art. The book itself is beyond just any normal book. This was a true, this wasn't a treasure. And you can see that she's very cautious about how you touch the book. And she opens it for you and says, this is the, uh... She spouts off a random Latin word that you're not entirely sure of the meaning of until she translates it for you and says, this is, uh... This is a fey codex, so to speak. Um... I'm not sure how much help it can be to you, but you're free to read through it as long as you're very careful with it. Once again, it is one of a kind. There is no other book on the planet that is quite like this. Ask her if she would mind if I took this back to my study for the she night, seems, and then you would bring it back. She seems super nervous about it, and she says, Yes, you may. Um, but if you'll do me one big favor, if I could, you know, be there to make sure that the book is taking, to make sure that the book is taking, it's not that I don't trust you, I'm not implying that at all, it's just I'm very nervous about what happens to this book. Sure, I don't see a problem with that. Great, I'll, uh, and she goes in and punches in her intercom and says, uh, I'll be taking the day off. If any of the students come by, please redirect them to this doctor over there. And um, She takes care of her business and then says, All right, let's go to the library then. Did you happen to get anything to eat before you got here? And after that, you guys both you know, make small talk. You make your way over to the library, get some lunch on the way over. And um, when you get to the library, uh, make another perception check. Okay. <coughs> Reroll your ten. Four successes again. Shit. Holla holla. Get dice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Five successes. Epic success. That constitutes a critical success. You've known for the longest time. Uh, like you notice that the way that she holds it, she's so particular about holding it. She's nervous. Um, as you look at her, and you know, the more you talk to her, the more of that odd woman with the hat you kind of see. Uh, you also notice in her pocket. In doctor's gowns have enormous pockets. If you haven't seen them before. Yeah. But you notice. As you're walking by, you know, and you kind of glance over and see something in her pocket, you notice that there's a the back of a black hat sitting in her pocket. Which she calmly puts her hand into her pocket and pushes down before you could really take a good look at it. If you weren't as perceptive as you were, you would not have noticed it. You are very perceptive, and you spotted <laughs> it right away. Um, so freaking lazy. Uh, <laughs> I just say, just go on quietly, normally, don't say anything about it yet. You get to the library, and uh, 
she leaves the book with you and says, All right, um, I'll be right back for a moment, but please, feel free to take a look at it. Just remember, I know I've said this so many times, but just please be careful with it. And then she goes off. Okay, let's crack this bad boy open. But very carefully. <laughs> you open the first page, and you're not quite sure why she kept saying, be careful with this book. This book was built to take punishment. The pages themselves look like they, once again, are carved from wood in a way that's... They carve the wood so thin that it could almost be mistaken for paper. Inside this book, you see... You see uh, pictures. There are a lot of pictures of all kinds of fantastic creatures that you've never seen before. None of the other books even come close to what the wealth of knowledge that is in this book. But the problem is, there's a lot of words that you can't read. Like just another language, or...? It's an entirely different language. It may even be encoded. Hmm. Well... Since I can't read it, I guess just keep flipping through the pages and looking at the pictures. You see what looks like a diagram of the human body, but if it were made with sticks and stones. Fucking shit. Jesus fucking Christ. You see the method and technique for how a, body, a person is essentially made from all of this. How they gather up a cloth bag draw two uh, two circles for an eye a smile for a mouth put it on top of a skeleton made of sticks uh, then they take a big bag and put a lot of rocks inside and leaves and they close it and sew it up and then they sneak in and they take the chot you see something that looks like a goblin come up and take a child and then put the little mannequin inside and then with a single breath the mannequin can be turned into a child that looks just like the one he has, and then he crawls back under the bed. You see it, and I would probably start to piss him off just like looking at that. He'd probably get really angry and upset by those pictures, and then wait for the chick to get back, or Jennifer, to get back before asking her what is this. Um. At this at, at a, this point, Jennifer does come back. She's carrying some uh, some glasses of water. She walks in and says, "Oh, have you found anything interesting?" She sets the glasses uh, glass in front of you. Um, try to control his temper and slide the book with the pages open to the sticks diagram. Be like, "Do you know what this means?" She looks it over and pulls some glasses out of her uh, pocket. And Read closer. It looks like she can actually read it. She whispers under her breath as she goes through it. Ah. This is the, uh, these are the pages on the creation of a doppelganger, uh, which is employed by, uh, the Fae in order, as according to legend, according to legend, uh, the way that they do this to capture new slaves for, uh, their entertainment, the Fae will oftentimes take their uh, take their slaves in their sleep, and they will sneak out, replace them with a mannequin to make sure that no one will ever notice, and then they put a part of they take the shadow from the victim and put it inside of the mannequin, and now that mannequin essentially is the person, and then they go back to their world with it with the uh, with the child. This isn't usually. This isn't just limited to children, though. They say this can happen to anyone. Hmm. And they say that when a person, when a uh, what they call a fetch, they call these fetches. When a fetch dies, they turn into sticks and stones again. The magic is dissipated. You all, uh, make a, make, I need you to make a wits and empathy check. Wits and empathy? Yes. 
I have zero in empathy, so. <laughs> Wait, how much do you have in wits? I've got three wits and zero empathy. So oh, you rolled two dice. dice. Okay. But you only do a luck roll if you only have like one in wits or something like that. What? Alright. No, I was just explaining to her like six, six, and three. Okay, so she doesn't seem you you don't notice anything else. You're very you're still very upset and you're very focused on the task at hand. Um so after she finishes explaining, she takes her glasses off and says, Um, oftentimes like uh she seems a little hasty about saying this. Oftentimes they lead very normal lives. No one would ever know. They grow they uh grow old and they have the same feelings as any other person would. They are, in essence, a normal person. What do you choose to do? Taco. I'm gonna sniff at this scotch whiskey. That smells so good. So they take the like the normal person and then replace it with a doppelganger, right? It's called a fetch. Yeah. Okay. But they act like real people. Yes. They are essentially a fake version of the other. And then she... Have there ever been, like, instances where they don't replace them and they just take the people? Sometimes, yes. Uh... Here, here, and then she goes to set. She goes to another page, and you see a young, a young boy walking towards what looks like a ring of mushrooms. She says, "This is the infamous fairy circle." Um, they say that once you step inside, you will grow old. But what this book shows and says is that once you step inside the fairy circle, you are essentially enacting a contract with the fae, which allows them to take you. And they bring you to the other side. The person disappears entirely from the world. But they will reappear again. When that may happen, no one knows. But the book does say that there have been occurrences in which a young boy will step into the fairy circle and reappear ten days later, an old man coming out and speaking to his parents as if he hadn't seen them for a very long time. Or other occurrences where the boy enters the fairy ring and walks out, only a few years older, but several hundred years later. So they like time travel? Not necessarily. And then she turns to another section of the book and says, these, sh these diagrams show that there are places, there's another place, that other side. On that other side, time only exists at the whim of the Fae. If the Fae decide that they wish for time to be slow, it will be slow. If they wish for it to be fast, they can make it fast, merely with a whim, a thought. And in that world, they rule. 
They rule every aspect of it. There's nothing there that is out of their control except one another. Any other questions? Are there different types of fays or fairies? There are very many kinds. And then she goes into the essentially the bestiary and says, the first, the lowest of the rungs are the changelings. They are people, they are children who once were human. Children, people, who were taken away by the fae for their amusement, for whatever fancy that they had at the time. And they take them into the hedge, and when they begin eating the food, or they stay there for too long, they begin to morph into something that's like a, a fae, but not entirely. They're, they're at a crossroads of being a human and a fairy. And they don't seem to fit on either side. Just above them are the goblins. Creatures born of the Fae, but they're not of very much power. They're clever, they're usually monsters of some sort, and they can be, well, many things. Everything from, the goblins seem to classify as everything from uh, the fabled troll that lives under the bridge to uh, shoe gnomes. Too. God damn, they're eating her. <laughs> they're gonna eat me. Oh my God. <laughs> and then above them are the gentry. They are the true fae, the most powerful beings that reign in the city of Arcadia. They seem to rule by way of different aspects of our world. For example, this is a picture of the, the Lord of the Lord of Trees. And in, at some point apparently was the King of Spring itself. And you see this large gaunt figure made of twisting barbed thorn and the head Looks like that of an old man with a beard. Uh, a beard made of vines and ivy. Except the top of his head is separated from his jawline. And held together at the front uh, by what would have been his mustache and teeth. Except those are replaced with vines. And it just shows him standing there and speaking to something as a tree grows out as in his what looks to be a castle made of trees. And then she says, the gentry appear to be very powerful beings that uh, can do numerous, numerous things, but they abide by rules. And once again, it is under their whim and their fancy. If they find something interesting, they usually will take it by, by force, simply because they can. As they believe it is their, their right to have anything that they want. And then there are these strange cre uh, these creatures called the strangers, and she turns to a picture of what looks like a normal person. Except he's pulling something from it, the picture shows him pulling something from a from a uh, true face head. What looks like similar writing to what's used in this particular book. She says, It appears that they have some means to extract names and titles from different beings and consume them, in turn taking on the title themselves and stripping someone of their own title. And she goes on, she seems to be totally uh, geeking out over the whole thing because apparently she doesn't talk to many people about this stuff and, 
I mean, after all, she's a doctor. She's not supposed to be interested in... Fairies. Why would she do that? That's just silly. But she's very informative. She seems to be able to read the book. Or at least is a very good actor and can make up stuff. Ask her where she learned to read this language. She kind of nervously looks to the side and says, Well, uh, like I said, I always was fascinated with this kind of stuff. And um, for some reason it just makes sense. It's like, for me, when I read this book, it's just natural to know what the words mean. I don't know why, but they are. I've tried to decrypt it and make it something somewhat translatable to uh, English, but the problem is that it is it is encoded in such a way that my own interpretations may actually be extremely incorrect. So everything you just told me could have been false? It could be up to interpretation, because of the way that it's written and the way that it it's described. It's extremely... Take, for example, this word, and then she points to one random word on the page. This word means... This word means summer. But if read this way, and she turns the book sideways, if read this way, this word now means earth. She turns it upside down. This word now means fire. She turns it again. This word means love. It's very unusually encrypted. I've read it in as many ways as I could possibly understand, and I've only learned to garner maybe a small fraction of what really is in this book. She takes a mirror out and puts it on top of the uh, on top of the word. It says, "Now this word, now this word means sun." Jesus Christ! Freaking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and this is with every single word in this book. Jesus fucking Christ. And once again, I don't know why I can read it. It just makes sense. When I saw it, I knew I had to have it. Like it was meant for me. Tell her, thank you. You've been a great help to me so far. <laughs> thank you. I'm I'm glad I got to spend some time and talk about something that interests me. I mean, doing my surgeon thing and talking to all the students and trying to raise doctors. Uh, it's just so tiring sometimes. It's just nice to be able to talk about something that I enjoy talking about without being ridiculed or made fun of. And she very carefully closes the book and takes it into her hands. If you ever need the, if you ever need to talk about the book again, please let me know. Or if you have any other questions, I'm more than happy to answer them for you if I can answer them. Thank you. And with that, she goes back. Uh, she goes back to her, her office where she takes the book. What do you do? Think about life. What time is it right now? You didn't realize that it was three in the morning. Three in the morning? <laughs> Freaking go to bed. <laughs> but 
Yeah, he would probably, as soon as he realized that, he'd be really tired. Pass out. And you wake up the next day. Later. You wake up the next day, and then you real like you 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 look at the time and realize shit. I'm supposed to be in class. <sighs> Fuck. You get up and you make your way over there. Get over there. You you make your way into the class and you look around in the auditorium and find that no one's there. That doesn't seem right. And then you see the janitor walk in. Good old Paco. <laughs> Paco. <laughs> you have gotten very acquainted with Paco, as he has been there in all the nights that you've spent. In all the nights that you've spent here, because you didn't want to go home. You were here, and Paco was there to... He didn't ever ask questions. He didn't. He doesn't even fucking speak English. Okay, pass it. But Paco's always been there. Paco's been there. He's um, that. He's that wordless friend that you didn't need to explain anything to. Except Paco today kind of looks at you confused, and uh, he points at the calendar and shows that it's Saturday. No one's gonna be oh. here. Isaac, you silly. <laughs> he just laughs and continues cleaning. Well, I'll probably go home then, since no class. No class. Whoop, whoop. You start to cross the campus when you see that strange... When you see Jennifer again, but she's back in that hat and with the with her hair up wearing this odd outfit. Very different considering that she's always wearing you only have seen you've seen her now in one of two ways, either wearing the hat or wearing her medical outfit. And she seems to be sitting down near that same spot near the same area. She's just kinda trying to read that same book again. Except she's reading it kinda sideways. Oh, Jennifer. Well, since he probably feels more acquainted with her now, he would walk up and try to talk to her and be like, What's up with the outfit? She looks up at you. And seems confused as to why you're talking to her. Almost like she's never seen you before. Um, you can only tell from the expression on her face is... A bit of a frown. Confused frown and her body language says a lot. And then she calmly closes the book and quickly, you know, uh, stuffs it away into a bag as she rises up at the same time, a little too gracefully. Like, there's something very alien about her movements. Like, gravity itself doesn't listen. She stands up and says, Oh... I know you. And she starts to walk yeah. around you in circles. You begin to know, uh, make a perception check as she's kind of walking around you and looking you over. Let's hope it's not too high. Oh, I only got one success on that one. My luck ran out. Must be a trick of the shadows, but you don't think she has a shadow. Hmm. She walks around you for a bit, and then she stops finally in front of you, puts her hands on her hips, and says... <sighs> she puffs her chest up a bit, and says... I didn't do it. Didn't do what? I didn't do the thing. And what thing would that be? The thing that you've been in that library for for the past six months. But I know who did it. Uh oh. Right, Shh. Can't it? tell, can't tell. If I do, I'll be in trouble. Then she saunters off. Well, 
Make another perception check as she walks away. Ooh, reroll that ten. ten. As she walks away, you can tell. No. You know for a fact now. She doesn't have a shadow. And then there's the sound of that rustling... The rustling of leaves. That smell... Of a forest. To others, that may be a pleasant experience. But for you... It brings back images of your wife in that room. Oh, God. Let's see. You'd probably... start getting a little upset and not want to go home see the room or anything, so he'd probably, I don't know, go back to his library area. As you walk into the library, you hear someone walking around, and, uh, you see Jennifer in her medical outfit. <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> she bumps into you and says, Oh! Isaac! <laughs> I, I seem to have forgotten uh, my pen, and uh, I, I, get, I figured, why not, might as well see how you're doing, and uh, <laughs> she's really awkward. You'd probably, be like, you'd probably be like, is this the game too? Do you think this is funny? What? You were just, I, saw, I just saw you outside. What do you mean? I didn't see you. I've been in here for the last 30 minutes looking for you. Make a perception check. God damn. We rolled that 10. Four successes so far. Oh my god. Rachel, just get the fuck out. Jesus. Four successes is really powerful still. You look at her, and you see a shadow. Because of your success, though, you're able to note that the shadows around where her ears are, they extend out almost in an elf-like manner. And it looks like she has a tail in her shadow that moves around. That winds like a serpent. And then you blink, and it's gone. <laughs> uh, Quiet, Mags. You're not allowed to talk. Apologize. Clark has Rasengan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You got that shouting no more. Yeah, what did chicken soon, man? He he might apologize then and then say he's it's probably he's just really tired today. I thought I saw you outside. I guess I was mistaken. Oh, it's it's fine. It's fine. I'm I'm just a little concerned that about your you know your well being. I'm hoping that you're not you're still drinking water and things like that. Did you <laughs> happen to get food? Mm, no. I think you should get some food. Probably. Come on. I know a nice place nearby. You wanna go? Agree and go to her with the place. You guys stop by at a at a small little uh, diner and she gets you some food and you know she does she doesn't talk about the fairies at all. It seems she seems to have picked up on this topic suddenly becoming very uncomfortable for you. Uh, 
Or at least that you're uncomfortable with something and she doesn't want to deal with that. But she does talk to you and, you know, it's small idle chatter. Nothing important. Nothing big. Just every now and then complaining about something about the school or how something should be done about that this. That cafeteria food, man. That cafeteria food. That's why kids yeah. get sick because this stuff is in it. <laughs> and she goes on and on, but... Um, Every now and again, you see and f you, you feel like her shadow switches for a little bit. And you can see those two glowing eyes. You can just see two glowing eyes in the shadows looking at you. There's eyes in the shadow? Every now and again, you're pretty sure it's just because you're tired and you're seeing spots that happen to be where two eyes would be on her shadow. Hmm. Every now and again. You're, you may be a lot more tired than you thought. Just keep ignoring it. It's probably, yeah, just tired. It's okay. always tired. At this point, um, she says, all right, I, I should probably leave you alone now. I'll, I just want to make sure you got some food and you're going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and head home now, so I'll talk to you some other time, maybe. Thanks for the lunch. See you later. <laughs> See you later, Isaac. And uh, she heads out. time is it now? It's about two in the afternoon. In the afternoon? Okay. Yeah. It's still Saturday, right? It's still Saturday. Okay. Mm. I don't know. Head back to the library again since you were going there in the first place and then you went out to eat and so now you'll go back, I guess. Since you never made it there. All right, you you make your way into the library, and you notice that all the books are gone that you've gathered up. Your notes are still there, but all the books are gone. You know you told the librarian not to mess with the books. Hell, oh, bitch. Go back and try to find everything again on the shelves. Takes you about three hours, but you eventually find them. Except there are. There's a small mannequin on your desk. Son of a bitch. It's small. Perception check on the mannequin? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Why? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like what I need it. It's a small little mannequin. Uh, kind of, it, Good job, it's I got know. sticks for a skeleton. Uh, looks like rocks are inside, and all mm -hmm. the everything that all the makings for a fetch. And it's just laying there. Are there any people around? No. It's dead quiet. <sighs> Man, uh... <sighs> Throw it away. You'd probably get angry. Throw it away. You throw it. Um, Not like actually like chuck it across the room, but like okay. get up and put it in the trash can. <laughs> Alright, you put it in the trash can. And you continue your work doing your research and laboring away. You don't know when it started happening, but 
you thought it might have been Paco. Paco. But you started to hear things in the library. What kind of things? Well, for starters, it sounded like the trash can that you put the little doll into moved. Oh! <laughs> uh, ignore it the first time and keep working. You have your book up, and you're reading, and then you're writing some notes down, and then you set the book down, and there's the doll again, on your desk. God damn it. Okay. Let's see. Uh, pick up the doll, and go looking around the library to see if anybody is down there with him. You go into the library, and you start wandering around until you find yourself in... And you're wandering the corridors until uh, you start hearing... What sound like whispers? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to deal with this. Like, are they just coming from all directions or one direction? From deeper, oh, deep. deeper into the from into the library. Deeper into the library. Okay, let's follow those whispers. You find yourself standing in front of... You get to a spot where you've reached the end of the hallway. You're at a dead end. Except, there's a door here. You've been here for two years, and you spent the last six months living in this library. But you've never seen this door before. It's very ornate. The architecture doesn't match. The door itself looks like it was carved of some strange wood. It's got a slightly green tint to it. And... The way that the uh, trimming is all set around the around the doorway and the archway is very elaborate, very very elaborate, almost like is the it like cover a really of that tall door. Yes, or a short door. Okay. It's a tall door. It looks almost like the cover of the book that Jennifer loaned you. Similar, That's the design sense. And there's still nobody around? <laughs> no one around. Except the whispers are coming from this door. Oh no, man. Um... Are there any, like, objects on any of the desks besides just books? Like, something I could pick up? There's a vase. Vase. Let's... How big is the vase? Big enough for you to hold in two hands and... Two hands. Maybe smash it over someone's head? You don't know. It's too big of a vase. <laughs> Go grab a dictionary. <laughs> and then go back to the door. And very, very carefully and slowly open the door, but just like jump back as you do it. You open the door, go back, and you jump back and you wait for it to open up. And then you just hear the voices on the other side shushing each other. you see the door slowly creaking back to a close. Oh. And then it closes shut. God. And then you just hear the whispers again. They're just talking to each other. <laughs> but you can't tell what they're saying now. Perception check. Yeah, let's do that. Perception check all the shit. Eats. 
You hear the sound of some of the books being nudged around. And you notice a book drop down next to your foot. You look up to see where it came from, and you just hear some small scratching noises. Oh my freaking god. Like something is running around up there, like a rat or something. And all you hear is, you hear, you missed, you missed. Stupid, stupid, how did you miss? <laughs> You know, I think at this point, he would probably back out of there. Just, like, go back to his workstation, close everything, and... You begin to try and leave the corridor, and you turn where you should have been able to see where your desk is, only to find that you're standing in front of the door again. <laughs> and you just hear laughing coming from the whispers above. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Turn he can't figure it out. Look at him. He's so confused. Turn around again. Try to go back. Turn into a Sharknado. <laughs> you turn around again and try to go back. And uh, you find yourself going back down another hallway. And... You don't remember this part of the library at all. Especially when you step on something that slithers back into the into the shelves. Okay. And you look down, and for a oh. glimpse, it looked like there was a giant vine creeping in. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Let's perception check on the area. Okay. Can I do that. Yes. <laughs> Let's do that. Just perception check every fucking thing. Your grandma's coffin perception checker to hell. Oh, that's five successes. Shit. Yo! You look around and begin to see the things scurrying around. They look like imps. Jesus Christ. Big noses, big heads. This reminds me of that one paranormal witness episode. Overly skinny. There for that. Overly skinny bodies. And you look around the library and behind the shelves and the books, like, this, you notice that something so small that you're able to surmise that you took the, you take the books and you throw them to the ground off the shelf and you see behind it is what looks like a garden. A garden made of briar thorns. Enormous, enormous thorns that are, and you see, the, you see the vines slither away from the light. All right, where? Oh, they slithered away from the light when I pushed all the books down. When you pushed all the books down, but you're not sure if it was from hiding from the light or what. Um, push some more books down, see what they do. It, they just continue to slither around, but they're not hiding from the light. They, okay. It seems to. It seems like it's reaching around, like it's trying to get behind you. Without being noted. <laughs> it's trying to give you a reach around. <laughs> Alright, let's... Freaking, I don't know. I would say he'd probably just, like, start trying to get out of there, but he doesn't know... I don't know where he would go, because... You turn around and see that the last of... Like, you see, you see one book kind of sliding on the ground that you knocked over is sliding underneath your legs and when you turn around to look you see it rattling its way up the bookshelf like it was being carried by something invisible and it neatly sets itself on the shelf of a bookshelf that wasn't there before it's 2.50 in the goddamn morning I don't need this and you look at you're now staring at the door again God. And now you can hear the whispers a little more clearly, and they say, Why does he keep doing that? Stop giving him. Just go away. Go. Right. Let him go away. At this point, he's probably beyond done with all this bullshit. <laughs> so, let's... 
You still got the dictionary in his hand. You still got the dictionary in your hand, and then you feel a tap on your shoulder. Oh my god. Like, turn around. It's... You turn around, and with a book raised over your head, and you see the strange woman without the shadow. The hat. She looks at you with... And now you can see her eyes are glowing, and her ears are pointed. And you also see a tail slithering behind her. She looks at you, trying to avoid being hit with the book. It says, Oh, what are you doing here? She rocks back and forth on her uh, on her feet. She doesn't seem like she can stand still for very long. Like She's always moving some in some way. She's just kind of constantly moving. Do you know what's going on here? Maybe. What's it to you? Okay. <laughs> How much is that? How much is that knowledge worth? I don't know. She looks up at the dictionary. Seems to frown. Eh, no. She looks over you a little bit more, and then points at your belt buckle. She says, I want that. Oh. Why that? I want it. So I'll trade you. Pants. I'll trade you information. I'll trade you where you... I'll tell you where you are if you give me that belt buckle. Because it's shiny. <laughs> she's, like a, she's like a parrot. My cock is heels attracted to shiny pants. Bad touch. She wants his pants. Uh, no, she, she says she wanted the belt buckle, so... Sure, mm -hmm. as long as his pants don't fall down. Your pants don't fall down, and she gives you back the rest of the belt. You use that to tie a knot. Cool. And she takes the belt buckle and... Senpai swag. She looks it over in the light and then... Bites down on it to make sure that it's real metal. And then she... Puts it into her pocket. And says... You are caught in a place between our world and the hedge. A doorway. Knowledge is a hall into other worlds. And it seems that you have somehow come across knowledge. Lots of it. Enough to start seeing us. Us? Who is us? She points to herself and notes the ears. Us. And then she points at the books. And you see little... You see more of the little imps now crawling around, but they seem to be scared of her. Oh, They're muttering to themselves, saying, Oh, no. The stranger. The stranger's here. The stranger. Come talk to the stranger. Don't talk to the stranger. Don't you make it would heal. definitely pick up on that. You see one of... You see... You hear one of the uh, imps say, Don't make a deal with her. Don't make a deal with her. Don't make any deals. She can take everything from you. If you value your life, you'll leave. Go through the door. Take your pants. Go through the door. <laughs> Don't be a faggot. And then she kind of looks at that imp with a, and her smile kind of gets nice and big. She tilts her head a little bit and says, I thought the deal was for you to be quiet. And then you watch as the imp falls to the ground and vanishes into dust. And you see her holding what looks like a little part, piece of uh, paper. And then when she rips it, you forget that he was ever there. You Where forget did that... everything he said, too. You forget everything he said. Where'd that pile of ash come from? God damn. What are you doing here? She looks you over and points at your shoelace. My shoelaces? <laughs> she wants one shoelace. She wants one shoelace. 
from your left shoe I'm going specifically. To take, are you going to take all of my clothes now? Well, it's she's all you've got on you. She's, she's stripping me. It's all you've got on you, unless you want to start talking about trading your dreams and your nightmares. I'll just give you the shoelace. <laughs> just give her the shoelace. She's got a lot of patience. She's going to slow, Rachel. She takes a shoelace and then she ties it into... She ties the ends together and then, you know, does that thing where she In does... The aglets? Yeah, and then she... <laughs> the aglets. And then she starts to weave the rope around between her fingers and she says I'm here because I'm going back home you're right next to my house actually you mean the door mm-hmm leads to my part you live there leads to my part of the woods I wonder why she showed you that book She should have thought known you that something like showed me the book. <laughs> oh no 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 no! So confused right now. See, you can tell because she paid enough for this. She she says, "Well, you can you can tell because I don't have my shadow." I noticed that. She has my shadow. She's my fetch. Julia is your fetch. They say that when a changeling kills their fetch, they can get back their half of the soul. So you want to kill Julia? No. I like her half of the soul staying right where it is. She's led a good life. A good life for me. Why would I need to take that away from her? She's me. But not. <laughs> Why are you looking into fairies so much? Is it because of that thing that happened at your house six months ago? Actually, oh, okay. six months Let's to today. Let's back it up now. <laughs> Punch her in the face. He, no, at this, like, he would grab her shirt and throw her into the bookcase. Oh, shit. That's better than punching her in the face. And then start demanding how she knows and answers. And <laughs> You reach for her, and right as you're about to grab her, you're stuck. You're still trying to reach, and she says, you haven't made a deal to touch anything here. And she walks around. Says, so, if you want to pick me up and grab me, as you do, I need something else from you. More shoelaces? Then she puts, uh, you also know she's not touching you either. She says, contract of... The contract of the hospitable host says that I can't harm you right now, not when you're in my home. Not until you've breached a contract, or until you... Until you break the contract of your own will. I can't touch you, you can't touch me. That's how it goes right now. Contract stuff. Um. But, as the hospitable host, I am to. I can tell you certain things. And she paces back and forth, walking in front of you. Says, If you'll go into that door and join me in my home. Because I don't like standing in this hallway. I will make an offer to you to tell you what happened and where you can find her. Deal. You That's walk. Lady. You walk through the door 
and what you find is something that is hauntingly beautiful. The lights float in the air on chandeliers made of glowing flowers. Inside the flowers are what look like little fairies that flutter around, uh, little winged um, pixies made of light that just dance around. You see a hallway, a grand hallway made of this green marble. You see statues of numerous kinds of people. All made of the same I'm material. To check all the statues? You may. I will. Well. Quite realistic, oddly. You don't know why, though. But they all seem to have the same sort of expression of despair. And you walk in. It's headed where I think it's headed. <laughs> and oh my god! Somebody, please no. You walk in until and see her hopping, uh, skipping along. She seems pretty happy to be back home. And you see her clothes shift and change, and they change into something more regal, more royal. And you begin to remember from the book that there is a certain class. There are two kind. There, there's a certain class of fae called the gentry and judging from the way that her clothes are and the way that she moves she almost becomes an embodiment of movement with clothes made of shadows and lies <laughs> that must be some expensive fabric only the best <laughs> She skips along until she finally reaches her throne, and you see her take her seat. Alright, I followed you to your house. Now you owe me some answers. I don't owe you any answers. I told you that I would Holy make an offer. His bitch. I would make an offer <laughs> to tell you. And so, my offer is... Ten years of your life. Ten years. Ten years of your yeah. life, and I will tell you how to get her back. <laughs> so good. So good. So good. You need to make... You need to make a... Let's see what kind of a check you're going to need to make in order to get this one figured out. Jesus. I need you to make an academics check, an academics, academics? and in, an academics and intelligence check, and this is going to okay. be kind of important. Okay, I have the four in academics plus the specialty in English. Not going to help you in this one. Okay, yeah, I figured, but... So it's academics and what? Intelligence. Academics and intelligence, you may expend willpower if necessary. Um... That gives you three extra dice to roll, but you lose one point of willpower. I'll do that, let's go for gold, so that'll be... One, two, three, four... And then how many? How much is willpower? Three. Three. One dot. So that's nine. That's nine. Nine dice. Dice total. Come on. Let's do it. Go for gold. Senpai needs a new scrunchie. <laughs> Shitting me. <laughs> Shitting me. Oh, much better. <laughs> done. It seems to be that when we use more dice, the chance of success fails. You're, you are, you feel yourself being enticed by the offer, where you kind of just, you immediately want to say yes. Ten years of your life to be back with a woman you love, of course, but there's a nagging feeling in the back of your head, something that, that's screaming at you and telling you, no, do not make that deal. 
don't make that deal. Like, he wouldn't, yeah, make it immediately, because he doesn't know that she can deliver or do anything anyway. I mean, she's dead. How could he bring her back? But... <laughs> Probably you begin to that, like... you begin to think of what Jennifer told you. Jennifer told you that things about the Fae, about how you deal with them, they have rules. The first being, once they make a promise, they cannot break it. It will kill them if they break that promise. That's how you destroy a Fae. But, if they say something, they always have thought about, about this, and they will make sure that it's done. So you can always trust the promised word of a fae. Because to, be to break the contract is death. Or immense suffering. Suffering unfathomable by the minds of mortal men. Um, Jesus Christ. But... She would, like, freaking sit down right now to think. She, she also mentioned, it's not important what you make the deal about what's really important are the questions that you answer uh, that you have answered and the questions you ask make all the difference you're playing a game with you th you think lo dealing with lawyers are bad <laughs> if lawyers sign contracts that literally could end in death or worse, or anything that the contract says, that's what you're dealing with right now. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ask her how she would even plan to bring her back. I wouldn't do a thing. Or how would she even do that? I would do no such thing. I merely provide information. Information is much more powerful than beating your head against a wall. Or stuffing your nose in books. Books that you can't comprehend or understand. I can tell you who took her. And I'll give you this as a freebie. She's not dead. <laughs> And then she stands up. As you notice, once again, she can't stand still for any given amount of time. Literally must move every single second. And she stands up, walks down the steps, and says, Although, I imagine in her situation, she might not want to be alive. What do you mean, baby? Well, you see. Oh, let me show you. And then she motions over, and you see numerous people come out from the walls. Uh, they statues? Not statues. These are people, and they look scraggly. Some of them look scared, and they look like they're one side is all black in black clothes, the other side is in all white. And you begin to realize that the floor, the tiles underneath your feet, are the tiles to a chessboard. Oh my and she says, God. you, over there. And a little servant boy walks up, two steps ahead. You, over there. And then the other one walks to the, walks up until she eventually makes them meet. And she says, you, destroy. And you watch as he pulls out a dagger and kills the other one. Oh my God. You see, Isaac... No, that's not your name. You're not either. You're something else. You see, we gentry live to be amused. Your betrothed is in a situation where she is now owned by one of the gentry. I can tell you who did it and how to get there, but I can't tell you how to do it without breaking contracts of my own, you see. Oh 
It's too real. It's gonna kill me. It's way too real. <laughs> Ten years of your life is all I ask. That's too many. It's a lot of years. Ten years. Thank God. Ten years. They belong to me. And I can give you back your entire life again. Rachel, I really want to throw some suggestions your way, but I don't even know if I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> you may make another you... academics roll. Academics and intelligence. Academics and intelligence, okay. Every time good. I mention, every time I bring up that she's trying to for. To trying to get that deal on you, you are allowed to roll in an attempt to try and figure out a means to get out okay. of your this situation. Well, that's three successes. Jeez. You begin to realize that it's not necessarily finding her as much as it is once again asking questions. What is it that she's hiding and why is she so hellbent on getting you to make this deal? More importantly, what does she get out of this? Yeah, ask her all those things. <laughs> you ask her first... What do you get from this? What do you get from all this? Well, I... get enormously larger amounts of amusement from... what will come with those ten years. And... in trade... you will have knowledge on your side... And if you use that knowledge correctly, which if fickle fate feels like being a little lenient, could spell disaster for someone I don't really like very much. And who would that be? Oh, the one that took your betrothed. <gasps> that is the sound of being done. I'm going to lie down. I'm gonna lie down here. And then I could walk in, traipse in, and Can take their name. That? And then I could just traipse on in after all is said and done. You rise as a hero with your woman in your arm. <laughs> and I get to... I get two things. I get to feast upon his name, and I have you for ten years. Why do you hate this dude so much? I don't hate him. And she looks offended. I don't hate this person. I don't hate anyone. You see, everything exists to be of amusement to me. Because of that, how could I hate anyone? Ten years. That's all it takes. Ten years. Why ten years? Because it's better than nine, but not as much as eleven. <laughs> okay, she's getting sassy with me. You're not sure if she's getting, if she's legitimately getting sassy, or if this is just part of how her logic works. Your academics check actually allows you to understand that she is... This is logic for her. And her logic is not the same as yours. And that's something you did get from the book, was the logic of fairies is very, very different from the logic of humans. They see things differently, and because of that perception, they don't necessarily talk on the same terms. One example is, for them... When, you, when a human walks up and they see fire, it warms them. And they, you know, they huddle around closer to get more warmth. To a fae, it's different. They see that fire and say, That fire has a contract with me to warm my body. I will break that contract if I stick my hand in it and violate it. And it will retaliate. So everything is a contract. Everything is a contract. There is no such thing as a, something that doesn't have a contract. The seasons have contracts. The reason why the seasons exist 
is a contract with Earth. Even the seasons are making good. Uh, and then you realize that do with ten years of my life. Well, you also realize that she hasn't necessarily made the deal with you, and you don't have to take this contract. You can me you can modify it to your benefit if you're smart enough. I'm not. Isaac is smart, but I'm not. That's okay. We can try and work him into it a little bit more. Your ca uh, Isaac Isaac begins to think. Well, why does it have to be 10 years? And why is it on her terms? Why does she get to make the terms? This is equal. She gets something out of this. I get something out of this. If this is how fairy logic is going to work, then she gets to have something of mine that I am willing to offer. And I have to agree to it, so I have to be willing to offer it. I'm not willing to offer 10 years of my life. I don't need to. I can offer something else. And when we fo both finally come to an agreement, we'll agree, and we can move on. As long as I don't break any of her rules while I'm here in her home, she can't attack me. She can't do anything to me. She can't harm me. She said so with her contract of the of the uh, of yeah, the I hospitable host. She leans down and says, "So you're gonna take it?" Give I think it's rather fair to you. You are going to grow old standing in the place you are right now. Probably. She also mentioned that she could, that you could apparently trade dreams, nightmares. You could trade many yeah, things. Yeah, ask her about what trading nightmares means. Oh well. You want to trade those precious things, do you? Or oh, nightmares, precious. Precious in many, many ways. The things that scare you, give you fear, make you reasonable, make you logical. There are things that scare you, and that's why you have nightmares. If he didn't have nightmares, he wouldn't know to be afraid. <laughs> if you didn't have dreams, you wouldn't know to be happy. So... So... By giving you my nightmares, you would take away my fear? She smiles, and you see that she's very careful about how she words everything that she says. Now it's much more obvious that she is thinking about what she says. A lot before she says it. She says, In a sense, yes. I would be taking away all the things that scare me. God. You wouldn't be afraid of anything anymore. I doesn't afraid of anything. <laughs> so, I'd much rather trade you for your nightmares. Give me your nightmares, and I'll tell you where your uh, betrothed yeah. is. <laughs> well, your nightmares would be of much more value to me than just 10 years of your life more useful not to say that you're useless just saying that I could make better use of such a thing something that I don't think you appreciate enough to use that's cool <laughs> um, can you repeat what she said about taking away the dreams instead of just nightmares because if you took, if she took away your, she said, if I take away your dreams, you wouldn't know how to be happy. You wouldn't know how to be happy. You wouldn't know when to feel good. You would just know that 
things happen around you. <laughs> and you would go about a bleak, <laughs> depressed existence. That's all it would be. <laughs> but is existing really living? <laughs> At this point, I will allow everyone else in this chat to assist you and help you ask questions. God damn it. You may ask que you may help her ask questions to try and deal with Raven to deal with Raven's <laughs> fucked up troll logic. To be honest, Isaac probably has the combined brain power of everyone in this room. <laughs> I know you were expecting a monster, but the way that I the way that I had this out was it was supposed to be a lot more of a psychological a psychological thing. Oh yeah, you're killing him right now. <laughs> I love these kinds of horror things. <laughs> ask him, ask her if that's like ten years shaving off your lifespan, or if it's ten years in servitude. <laughs> yeah, ask that. Ten years. Like if, is it that, like, will I become? What is it? How old is he right now? I forget. Yeah, will I be like forty-four by the time I walk out of here? So is it ten physical years? She walks around you a bit more and thinks. Ten years to be used however I see fit. If I just wanted to take it from you in physical years, then I'll just take it from you. If I wanted you to work using it, then I'll have you work using it. But ten years would belong to What do you to want me. to do? Oh, I'd do a lot. I want to do a lot of things. Anything that would amuse me at the time. Maybe it's cleaning out my gardens. Maybe it's going and killing my enemies for me. Maybe it's Oh, I don't know, playing chess? And she looks over and you see another child kill uh kill a woman with a sword. Jesus. Taco, taco. What? And they just seem to talk accept to it. Maybe talk to her about uh Rav uh Raven's ability to uh bend time. What do you mean? The way she bend those years to be longer than what a human like slower or year. faster yeah. you extend that year to be 10 one year to be 10 human years but yeah because it's only years defined by earth years a, a human perception of years you don't know if she's talking about the human version of years or if she's talking about her being able to extend that year oh my god i never thought of that Yes. Yeah, ask, ask her, is it 10 human years or 10 in... She yeah. seems to frown at this, and now she's understanding. It's going to be a little bit more difficult than she originally thought. <laughs> oh, nice. That was a good question. That was a good question. She pauses and says, 10 years that belong to me as decreed and defined by me. Whether that's human years or not, we'll decide when... When I have it. Oh, I'm gonna oh. dream. The combined brain power of nightmare really things drive me insane. That's the whole point. Welcome to Changeling, the beautiful madness. Stop it. So wait, Ask her why she wants all of the nightmares. Why can't you just have one bitch? <laughs> why have to be greedy yeah, like that? Is it one enough? Because all of your nightmares, you see, are intertwined. Oh, it's not just one nightmare. You can't just pluck one. I want all of it because it is far more valuable to me than ten years of your life. Twenty, even. How does she know oh. if it's valuable to her? Why are they so valuable? Why, why are they so valuable to you? Oh, you can use it for all kinds of things. A human nightmare is very, very powerful. It's like finding... Hmm, how do you describe it? Uh, let's see. 
It's the equivalent of finding, let's say, a large diamond on Earth. Very valuable. So, is she talking about your entire lifetime's worth of nightmares? Yeah. What if you just don't take the contract? What if you just walk out? You're still technically a guest. She can't harm you. What are the consequences of her taking the nightmares from you? You won't be able to experience life to the fullest. Everything will just occur. You won't feel. Oh no, that. Oh, she takes away dreams. dreams. Oh, damn it. Nightmares are taking away your fear, but. I'm pretty sure Silver was right when she said that might come back to bite me in the butt. You Fucking know what dicks in my mouth. Can't feel fear. Wait, what if she says she'll take away your nightmares, but she just takes away your ability to sleep? Or dream at all? Oh no, I can't do that, you see. Contracts of the contracts with the dreams are very, very powerful. Very dangerous. Ask her about just leaving, like, what if you just don't take it? What if just fuck it? Fuck it. I don't like your offers. It's I'm, like... I'm ollieing out. Goodbye, bitch. If you decide not to take it... It's okay, but, like, here's the thing. I, yeah, like, I myself would walk out of there, but Isaac is desperate. God fucking damn, Isaac. So, Isaac. I, like, he can't just walk out. Like, she is saying that she will bring back his wife, and he is... Oof. That's six months to mourn, you asshole. Get over it. Well, she's not dead, just in a different yeah. state. <sighs> and then she begins. Now she begins to press him, and you, you realize this as she says. She starts tapping her chin, and says, "Oh, actually, <laughs> oh, that I remember your wife. I saw her not too long ago." Oh, okay. <sighs> Oh, this bitch. This Probably bitch. wants to hit her. I think she was, uh... I think she was... Hanging around in a chandelier somewhere. Lit a flame. And then she motions to one chandelier that's above you, and you see... You see, uh... A young man, a young boy, chained inside of an orb. And he's on fire and just sits there, staring ahead like he's been in, trapped in there forever. And then she just snaps her fingers and he immediately gets up and begins to dance. Because that's what fire does. Fire dances. And then she says, kind of like that. I don't remember exactly. There's a lot of them. His house needed more lights anyway. You never know. Although, he did own a lot of spiders. He may needed someone to deal with spiders. Oh, wait a minute. Ask her if you can dictate how those ten years are used. If they're, if they're dictated on your terms, you won't give those years away unless you have control of what happens to them. And why does she need your nightmares and... The dreams. She only. I, I, she, she, she doesn't want his dreams at all. Not really. Alright. Oh, she okay. wants the nightmares or ten years. So. Oh, or ten years. Yeah. Nightmares or ten years. I think I know the Fey that has his wife, but remember, I talked about him earlier. The certain Fey. The. The king of the trees. God, I, I was taking trees. notes, but then this freaking got too ridiculous, and I <laughs> I lost track of those notes fast. So wait, what are your nightmares? Losing his wife. Or fear, I guess. Oh. Hmm. How? I think. What happens to you if she takes away the nightmares? She's not saying exactly. She's being very evasive with that. Uh, tell me straight up. She can, she can do whatever she wants with your... Will something bad happen to me if you take my numbers away? Oh, Uh-oh. Call might be dropped. Oh, no. Prepare for the dropping. Until then. I'm thinking. I mean... 
And I'm like trying to think really hard. It's like I, freaking one thirty. I don't have. I don't have enough. It is three thirty a.m. I don't have enough brain power for this. <laughs> Fuck my head. Let's say. So, there is no right or wrong answer here. There are only consequences. I know. I know. Especially yeah, when we're dealing just with playing twenty questions. Yeah, especially when dealing with a fay. I mean, you have to be very specific. I wouldn't say specific. Just understand that anything that you do will have consequences. I know. That's why I want to be so careful. Are there other things that she values? I mean, I think it's just the nightmares and the years. What was oh, she? she's oh, always she's interested in metal. She was interested in metal, wasn't she? She is, well, but she, she was earlier, but. And you see her take out your belt buckle, actually. And she looks at it kind of carefully. And you s and what you see her do is she she takes the metal, the the belt buckle, and says that the belt buckle holds two sides together. It is a bridge. It is a negotiator. <laughs> the diplomat between two sides, and she puts it on the ground in front of, in front of both of you. Uh, Shit. What about the shoelace? She takes the shoelace and continues to play with it. That's all she wanted it for. Oh. And says, "If you have questions, if you have questions, I suppose the negotiator can speak to you. Although it seems you have to speak in Rachel, Rachel, read what Yuki's saying." The soul of my. <laughs> your soul. Your soul. The soul. Give it to the her. soul of a shoe. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm scared to say it though. Actually, you might just say say it's that you're saying the actual <laughs> soul in your body. But you say like, you say exactly. What if I hand over my soul? Oh. Oh. That's good. But... In my hand. <laughs> How many people think I should do that? But I don't know if she wants the soul. Uh... That's true. But she didn't say soul. She it... wanted ears. Just say, but if you say what if, she will answer you. It's not like you're not actually pledging to give it to her. You're just saying what if. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay. Goddamn Faye. Is there um, anything specific in particular that you know in that make uh, the nightmares and dreams of Isaac special? <laughs> Wait, Rex is quiet. What if yeah. that soul trick at would actually work? Try it, try it, try it, try yeah. it. <laughs> What if, what if I uh, hyper, you have to say hand you if I hand yeah. you my soul? That's the key. I know. I'm scared. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Alright. So <laughs> can we, yeah, can we like <laughs> rewind the game? There is no rewind. Oh once it's been set, it's <laughs> done. What if? Don't actually say you're yeah. going to say what, what if, if. What if I gave you what my... If I offered to what if... hand over. <laughs> it gotta be specific, yeah. I know, I know, I know. I gotta be very specific. She's a sneaky, sneaky cack. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> what? 
Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> what if I offered to hand you my soul? Soul? Do I look like a demon? Oh. I'm not one of those people. Those are weird contracts. No. That's interesting oh, well. for you to say soul. Souls are icky. Okay. Uh, now so we gotta go back to 20 questions. <laughs> well, that'll work soon. Oh! Oh, read what Silver just said. <laughs> oh, Silver! Uh, but he doesn't wear a watch. He oh. could. He could. <laughs> he can if you say that he can. <laughs> Cell phone. <laughs> Cell phone time. <laughs> Fuck you, Andrew. Oh. Shit. <laughs> She's got like a Nokia. <laughs> no, but she doesn't. <laughs> no, but like she didn't. <gasps> She didn't say time, she said years, like specifically I want ten years, not ten time, I don't know. But, but, try just saying that, I'll give you the, um, or, what if I, I want the time? But if it's, I will give you my time, but I don't, we don't know if that'll fly. But if, I don't know, I don't know if I say that, if it like automatically makes the contract or not. Yeah. He's an English literature professor. Not a lawyer. God time. Yeah. How about you just give me those nightmares? God. Nightmares sound better than yours. Yeah, definitely. Pick a poem. <laughs> and then... I'll even spice up the deal. I can tell you how to get her back. Not just mm. where she is. And... Well, I thought she already said that at the beginning. No, she said she would only tell you where she is. Where? Yeah, oh, okay. So she wouldn't have she so... wouldn't have helped you get her back in the first place. No, she was never in, like your academics will tell you enough to make you realize she won't actually tell you. She didn't originally intend to tell you how until okay. you just where until you made the offer of nightmares. Not entirely, Dell. Not entirely. Uh, she has, she has upgraded the contract. <laughs> she hasn't broken it because she said, she she will tell him where. She never said anything about whether or not she was going to tell him how. So if she adds that onto it, it doesn't break any contract. She's still telling him where. So making an offer. She's offering to tell me where she is, and then how to get her back. If you give her your nightmares. All the nightmares that you've had so far. So, will that... So is it so break... far, or... So far. nightmares in the future, too? For the rest, yeah. Are, are future nightmares included in this? She says, no. Just for so far. Just for so far. But will you get any more nightmares if you take them on? Oh, what I oh my gosh, Del! <gasps> Del! What if we're to find them? I can't do this! I can't do this! Dreams are a gateway to the mind. Right! And then Isaac just asked what I typed. Dreams are a gateway to the soul. 
Something she says. Raven seems a little distressed that you would ask that question uh, about the nightmares. If you were to find her, uh, if he were to find her in his nightmares, she says, "No, no, you would still be able to find her." Yes. You mean like physically find her? Yes, I can tell you where she physically is and how to physically get her. What about her mind? Her mind. I can yeah. physically bring her back to the real world with me? The more time you spend here, the more time she spends here as well. And the more time she spends here eating our food and li it, breathing our air, the more like us she becomes. How much time do you really think you have? Make the deal with me. <laughs> And She's I'll... been gone for six months. I am on my hands and knees right now, man. <laughs> six months isn't necessarily six months here, though. I know, that's what I meant. Like, mm -hmm. she's been gone for six months, but not may maybe longer in the Fey world. A lot longer. Wait, if you can find her, will she still be the same person? Maybe, maybe not. I can't yeah. guarantee any of that. That's up to her. Depends how long she's been in there. Like... You don't oh even know if, if you'll even remember him. I'm going to have nightmares about this. <laughs> <laughs> Will she even remember Isaac? beside the point though. He still wants to save her. Yes. Uh, Trade me all the nightmares that you had so far. And I'll tell you where she is and how to get her back. I can't break my con I can't necessarily breach my contract and tell you the method in which to destroy my enemy. But I can tell you of people who know how to and you can go to them for answers. And who would they be? I can't tell you that until you until you make the deal. I'm gonna pull my brains out. But yeah, so have you asked so, what happens to you if you lose your nightmares? She yeah. takes away all like you my lose. fear and mm. so you won't know so what far to do. So far, visibility to feel happiness at the same time. No, so that's only for dreams. You just won't nightmares, know what to nightmares fear. just takes away the fear. I think. So you wait, wait they said nightmares. Rex, the... could, you, could you repeat it? Because we asked that question a long time ago, but... Oh, if she were to take away your dreams, you would take... She would take away your ability to understand happiness. And if she took away the nightmares? You would. She would take away all of the fears that you previously had. Oh. If wait, she so... So, your big fear is that you couldn't find her again? What if after she takes it away, you don't care about her anymore? Oh. You're just making it harder. And she, and she can use those fears against you. God damn it. Ask what Trance said. If you ask what Trans said... Until I get high. Uh, if you ask what Trans said, she... She actually looks like she physically wants to, like, strangle you, and reaches. <laughs> you can't, I'm the guest! And she her. can feel her, like, you watch as her hand goes for your neck, and then suddenly stops, and she pulls back, and there's cuts in her hand. She clenches it in a fist. <laughs> says, and she, you know, straightens herself up like nothing ever happened, and says, Now why would you think that there would, oh, well, I can't lie to you in this situation. Not, not, not here. Not here. Yes, if I were to take away your fears, you would not be able to care about her, because you wouldn't fear losing her, so letting her go would be easy. You're very clever, Isaac. You're interesting. 
for this game because I haven't had such a riveting conversation with anyone in such a long time. I will tell you the how, but not the who. Okay, so now the where? She will not tell you the where, but she Wait, will so tell you how. Are you going to tell me where anymore? No. I'll just tell you how. There's a group of people that live not too far from where you are. There are people who wear cards. And they are people who will be able to help yeah. you get your wife back. She's out there. I know I will tell you this much. She is here in the hedge somewhere. A slave to one of our own. But there are people, humans just like you. All you have to do is follow the cards. And you'll find oh a means. But just remember, if you think I'm scary about contracts, you humans are the ones that made them. Academics check. Should I do that? She's been pressing you uh, this whole time and you I, haven't been doing anything. How great, how can great I, is your academics? Well, my academics is, what is it? Three or four plus my intelligence with this two, so that's six. Am I allowed to do that right now? You are, and you're allowed to switch off to wits. Wait, what do you mean? Switch intelligence out for wits, because now this is a high pressure si uh, situation. Oh, that's... Intelligence is when you are thinking about knowledge of the past. Wits is okay. you're dealing with something now. You need to be on your feet. All right, that's seven, so I'm gonna do that then. Here we go. Ooh, Ooh that ten just saved you. Yeah, one ten. Ooh. Uh, well, you got a one. I, don't, I got one. And she's, I got three ones. She says, "Well, you basically what you can gather is okay. So she can tell me who these people, uh, the how, which is somehow getting affiliated with these people that she's talking about. All she gave me, the, the only clue she gave me was follow the cards." Cards people will help me bring her back. The cards. The cards. Or they have something to do with her. Okay, 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 okay. Believe in the heart of the cards. The heart of the cards. Um. Will she tell me where I can find the card people? She already told you where. Just follow the cards. Not too far. <laughs> and she says too far from the couch. and then she finally after like you begin to notice that her hand has is still bleeding and she sits back down on her throne now she's very still oddly and there's something very unsettling about that as she stops moving and she looks to the side and you can see the cuts on her hand getting bigger <laughs> until her arm starts to shake and then she suddenly stands up and starts moving around again and says, I think it's time for you to go. Get the fuck out of here. Oh. I am glad that you were here and yeah. partook in our little game. It was very interesting. Please do come back another time. Oh, you beat her. You beat like, her. It took us like two hours. <laughs> Is she, is she just gonna like leave me to like walk out the door myself, or is she like escorting me out? You, she motions for one of the chess piece children to take you out, and he walks you over to the door, and he seems like you know you can look at him and you can see how pathetic and pitiful this person is, how everyone in this place seems to be, and he seems he tries to be so happy about it. Thank you. I'm glad that you have. 
entertain the mistress, and please do come back another time. And he opens the door for you and allows you to go out. And you find yourself standing in the library again as you step back out. You hear the door close and you turn around and the door's gone. Okay. Let's see. I, truthfully, at this point, he would probably go, like, slowly walk back to where his desk was and have, like, a mental breakdown and probably start crying. No. Just because. Nobody would do it. But the news, Nobody. his wife is still alive. Yeah. Oh, so, God, but that bullshit, man. You didn't lose anything. Oh. He, just has a, he just has a tummy with so breakdown in his office. He just throws something out the window. Uh, he wouldn't <laughs> shove anything or kick and scream. He wouldn't do that. He'd just, like, sit down and... I don't know. Oh, freaking God. I am, like, feeling his pain right now. <laughs> Dude, I'm feeling that pain right My now. My God. Down the desk? No, probably God damn not. It, Taco, just... I'm, I got emotionally invested in this far game. I'm <laughs> barely emotionally invested right now. Okay, so... You... Let's... Okay, never mind. Say you see you that, uh... You actually see that Jennifer was kind of looking around carrying her book and she was she looks very worried as she looks around the library until she finally uh, sees you says uh, but she walks up to you but doesn't say anything she just sets the book down and takes a seat next to you you'd even say anything. Probably not. It's just a long silence and she said I was really worried when when you disappeared. There were these people that were looking for you. They came after me too. And that's when you notice that uh, you notice that she looks like she'd been running. She looks kind of ragged. People. I don't know. They had these cards on their uniform. Well, okay. If I want, I think they were trying to kill me. Drop everything. Ask her where they are. You're going to go look for them? What? She thinks that they were trying to kill her, and she she doesn't know. Does she know where they are? Do you know where they went? They're they're in, in the main building right now. I managed to sneak away and get here into the library. Pack everything up, beeline it over there. <laughs> wait, wait you, you can't go to... What is it? And then she follows you, uh, she follows after you. She's kind of like saying, no, 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 you can't, do, you can't go to them. They look dangerous. They're carrying weapons. Rax, don't tell me that they'll shoot him. You you make a beeline over and you see, uh, you see, uh, you see a really, really big dude. I mean, this guy is eight feet tall and built. <clears throat> he is a giant. You look, he looks over and you can see that he does, he has an eye patch and everything. I mean, this guy is enormous. He looks over at you and you can see on his uh you can see on his lapel and you can see an ace of clubs. Oh shit. Oh shit, he's top dog. He's top dog. He straightens himself up and adjusts his jacket and he looks at Jennifer before turning his attention to you and says so you're Mr. Isaac. Yes. That's me. Um yeah. 
And then, yeah. <laughs> I've never felt this more intense at 5 a.m. in my life. Yeah, uh, he says, hmm, do you have a house nearby? Yes. Is there something I can help you with there? He scratches his chin and he seems to... It's not that he's slow, it's just that he's very thoughtful about what he says, as he looks around. He seems to look up towards the windows, and then motions with his hand, and you see, uh, you see him, and you see many people, actually, walk out of the school, and they go their separate ways, and he seems to be the last one, and he's alone with you. So, at this point, he says, I'd like to... Uh, join you, if you would, over a cup of coffee at your house. It would be most convenient if we could do that. Paul, bye. <laughs> um, sure, absolutely. Because, like, he sees the cards on them and stuff, so he's... You see, uh... Gonna invite them in, because he knows these are the people that she was talking about. You feel that presence of Raven being around again. Oh my freaking god. I can't ever get a break. And you look over at Jennifer's shadow? She seems very concerned, and she doesn't seem to notice any of what's going on. You're not... Sh you're not certain how, what her affiliation is with her fetch is, uh, with, uh, Raven is, but you see in her shadow those eyes and that smile. <laughs> and, uh, Hello. that's... And you notice that the big guy also sees it, and he says, uh, Miss Descartes, Dr. Descartes, my apologies. We would like some privacy. I was only looking for you at the time because I needed to locate Mr. Isaac. Thank you. We have a deal, though, with your other half. And so we would like to not talk with you. And she seems relieved and says, you're not going to hurt him, though. And he says, we will uh, we will not try to hurt Mr. Isaac. <laughs> not try. We will not try. At this oh point, God. you both go and you, fi you find yourselves back at your house. Uh, he, sits along, uh, he sits with you. He's the only one who came. And, um, he sits, he doesn't say anything for a good long while and says, so, you ran into her. You managed to get into her domain. As such, you have become a very, very valuable target. And not for us. Uh, we are talking about numerous other hor hunter organizations are now interested in you. We came oh, to you good. first because we happen to have an insider who was watching, one of your students. Oh. Who would that be? Do I know that... them? Also, the janitor. <laughs> Paco. Good old Paco. Good old Paco. Good old Paco. We had them. Um, wow. We had heard that you had a run-in with the Fae, and naturally we were interested, seeing as you were uh, an esteemed professor of the English literature. We wanted to ensure that things weren't going to get worse. Our duty is to protect humanity, 
we would ask and extend our hand to you to ask if you would help us and use that knowledge that you have. Perhaps even help us infiltrate Raven Mirage's home, her castle. We are an organization that operates off of favor for favor. If you do something for us, we will do everything in our power to make sure that we can do the same. of Something of equal value to yeah, return to you. Um, I don't know exactly how it'll work. It was like, yeah, he asked about... She said something that your organization knew how to get my wife back. Ah, that's easy. And then he, you see him reach into his jacket and pull out a really fucking massive gun. And he puts it on the table. <laughs> and then he pulls the bullets out and sets it down and says, We do know how to combat fairies. We have dealt with them on more than one occasion. In this case, what you see here is a bullet made out of cold iron. When fire and hit makes contact with any fae of any kind, it will immediately burn them and cause them immense amounts of pain, simply for being cold iron. It's also hollow tipped so that way when it hits, it shreds inside of their body, making sure that maximum damage can be done, and they can't get the shells out fast enough before they bleed to death. They bleed and burn to death. So how does killing all the fairies help me get my wife back? It doesn't. We also know how to negotiate with them because we have several fey within our ranks. Changelings, to be precise. But, nonetheless, if you're interested in saving your wife, we can help you. We would be interested in assisting you as best we can. I don't guarantee anything. That is left in the hands of my superior. But what I can promise is that you will have at least you will at least have me to help you when the time comes. All right. I will help you. Very good. And he reaches over to give you a handshake. And then you begin to then you hear the words that Raven said before. Be very careful about humans and their contracts. They're far more nefarious than any of than I am. Shit. Just I'm, I'm out. Done. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yep. God. Okay, so your character basically will end up going into the, uh, will end up joining the Cardians over at the, over at the house. Your rank yep. is, your rank is, uh, because of your value right now, actually. You're at four of spades. Whoa! <gasps> we have another spade. Four Three of spades! Because there are things that you are privileged to know that no one else in the group is going to actually know. And that makes you extremely valuable to the organization. Um, so as such, they have given you that rank, and they've au they're offering to pay you as much as what you'd get as a professor at the school, which isn't much. And then they said, we'll pay you more. You now have resources. Two dots. Dude. Two You have two dots and resources. Okay. It's a merit. Yeah, resources and merit. Alright, one point automatic, yes. Learning curve. <laughs> I don't know if you learned anything. Did you learn anything? <laughs> the phaser dicks. What'd you learn, Taco? I, need I to... learned some stuff. <laughs> some things. Oh, okay. Just one thing. Raven is a fairy fae. What was the S word? Stranger. Stranger. And a total bitch. Yup. 
I can agree with that. Um, because <laughs> that's something not a lot of people do know. When you told the hunter, uh, the uh, Cardians, and said, "Yeah, she's a stranger," they all kind of looked at each other and kind of shocked and very surprised. They all she took wants notes. Some dude's name. The dude that took my wife he wants her name. Or she wants his name for some reason. They keep note of that, and they find. I mean, they listen to you really intently, and they they they're very interested in working with you. Uh, role playing. You did a really good job of role playing, uh, Isaac today. Uh, I'm feeling it, man. I'm feeling it. Heroism. Not really. <laughs> I don't know, man. You argued for like 40 minutes with some bitch. I think that's pretty that was like That was like an hour and a half minimum. <laughs> One point, success, you didn't die. Danger, you were in grave danger of fucking up. If you'd done anything like to break the contract of the, uh, of the hos- of the, uh, what was it? The hospitable- Hospitality? Yeah, yeah the- the, ho the hospitable host. If you had broken any of those contracts, you would be- you would literally be dead. Thank God. And that, and trust me, when I say like there are some weird ass rules that could break it, and she doesn't tell you, it's stupid things like, well, did you take your shoes off at the door? If oh, no, God. you've broken my contract. You're dead. Did you eat the salad with the salad fork? Oh my God. Did you? <laughs> no, you're dead. Appreciate the fine art. No, fuck you. <laughs> no, fuck. <laughs> okay, so danger, yes. You are actually that entire time being in there in extreme danger. I think you deserve the four of state. really Because honestly, if you had. Uh, I think what I planned on doing, because. Shit. Trans, you fucked everything up for me. <laughs> That's what I do. You specifically <laughs> fucked. Would be nowhere. You specifically yeah, fucked question. everything up. I was going to try and work it towards the nightmares, but what would happen is exactly what Ha said. You would literally have lost all passion and fear of keeping her around, and God. you would you would get her back. Actually, no, you wouldn't care enough to go get her back because you can God. let go now. You know what? Train is just very useful right now. Train is like the strongest member on this team. <laughs> Honestly, that's exactly what would have happened, and that was supposed to be the mind fuck there was. Isaac suddenly just doesn't care anymore. His nightmares are over, and he feels great. But he's not scared would, of losing I, her I anymore. I literally would have shut my laptop and walked away. <laughs> that's what would have happened. <laughs> Wait, I just realized something. You just filibustered your ass, Rex. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so, Danger, yes, you get a point for that. Uh, so, so far, five points. Wisdom. That actually was a really brilliant plan. It may not have been devised by you, but Ha was the one that helped you get there. Yeah. You have... Yeah, you you have... Ask for help, so technically... Yes. <gasps> you have... Let me see. What's your uh, what's your flaw? What's your character's flaw? Aloof. Aloof. Yeah. That didn't come into serious play this time around, so I'm not too worried. I'm not gonna really focus on that. You still get six experience points. Yeah. Cool. Uh, trans for that question and asking the right question, you get an extra experience point too. Yeah. <gasps> that was the question to ask was about the nightmares and what exactly. But it wasn't so much asking what will they do because she was very honest. It'll take away your fear. But you didn't. Re but no one else kind of picked up on if he doesn't have fear, then why is why would how scared would he be of letting her go anymore? And that's honestly, I've never run a campaign where they have seen this side of Raven. Besides just her showing up and being an annoying character. This is this is actually what she's like. You actually pissed her off. <laughs> also about her fetch. 
You have actually made the other team. The other team ran into her fetch and killed her. They killed the fetch because they figured if we kill the fetch, we can kill Raven. And they killed the fetch, and it ended up causing Raven to become whole. And that's how she became. <sighs> Uh, that character is old though. That's that's a much different Raven than what she is now. This is this is a this is a brand new Raven. New improved. A different life. So, you guys did really good day. Thank you very much. It was a very fun session. Um, really kind of surprised at the outcome. Fun. Yeah. <laughs>